Hi and welcome to this new video. So I read lots of interrogations online about how to make an autonomous solar node and lots of questions about what kind of solar panels to use, what kind of batteries to use and if, if the dimensioning is going to be enough to maintain a solar node on a long period of time without recharging. Well, the only way to know is to try. So today we will install our solar node with a small 6 watt solar panel we will uh, also measure the initial voltage of the battery pack and we will follow with voltage measurements once every day to see how the solar panel is recharging the solar node. Okay, so we are going to see what's the voltage reading on that small solar panel that will be used to recharge the solar node. So the objective is to see if we get enough voltage and enough current uh, with such a setup. So we will use a multimeter device. We will use the small connector which exposes the voltage pin and the ground pin so we can measure it easily with the multimeter. So let's connect that to the USB output of the solar panel and we will measure the voltage. The solar panel itself is a generic Amazon 6 watt solar panel. Its dimension must be more or less 20 centimeters by 15, I would say. So it's a rather small solar panel, but it's supposed to produce 6 watts. So let's check the voltage because there is a voltage limit on the, especially on the rack wireless boards which uh, accept 5.5 volts maximum, if I'm not wrong. So we have to be sure that the output of this solar panel will not exceed this limit, this voltage limit. Okay, so we will now measure the voltage of the solar panel here, which I will move around the, the sun to check if the voltage can be optimized. But let's first measure what we get now. So I am putting the probes on the voltage meter and we see that we are getting 6 volts. That's already an issue because the rack wireless is supposed to receive maximum 5.5 volts. So we might have to set up a diode in series with the solar input port so that it's going to be a double objective. It's going to avoid that current goes back to the solar panel, which is nice. And it's going to reduce the voltage by probably half a volt, which would be perfect because then we, we would get 5.5 volts. Let's see if the voltage is changing with the solar orientation. Doesn't seem to be the case. It's quite sunny, so I guess it doesn't change much because it's full sun. It seems to hold its 6 volt open voltage, even with some shadow on it which is nice. So now let's try to measure the short circuit current. What's the maximum current that this solar panel can produce? So for that, we will have to change the multimeter connection. We have to put this probe on the amp measurement. And we will put it on the milliamp scale. So let's see what we measure on the milliamp scale. If it's supposed to be six watts, we should be able to measure. So I'm trying to hold the probe on the board itself with one hand. And let's see if we get, no, we don't get one amp. We measure 690 milliamps. So that's, that's a little bit more than half an amp. So we don't measure quite an amp, even with an ideal sun orientation. So I guess the Chinese specifications are wrong. Yes, yeah, so full sun exposure on the panel is more realistically in the range of the 600 milliamps. Almost 800 milliamps here, but that's really sensitive to the positioning of the panel. 
800 milliamps. That's the maximum of current production in short circuit for 6 volts. So that's a little bit less than 6 watts. It's actually more in the 5 watts range rather than 6 watts. Okay, good test. So we can conclude by saying that the solar panel does not exceed its specification. It's actually a little bit less. It produces maximum 5 watts, maximum 800 milliamps at around 6 volts. Because we are exceeding the 5.5 volts limits of the solar input port on the rack wireless board, I had the idea to maybe test a specialized charging circuit. This is a little board specialized to charge lithium ion cells and it is called the TC4056 uh, chip board. Uh, it is supposed to regulate the charging current and voltage to a lithium ion cell. So I'm going here to solder this little board to the output of the solar panel and we will check what kind of voltage we measure at the output of this charging circuit and also what is the maximum current, the maximum charging current we get on the board to see if this is usable or not. And maybe it is an alternative to the direct connection of the solar panel to the rack wireless board. So let's see. Okay, so we will measure the voltage now on the output of this charging circuit. We'll connect the probe on the negative probe on the negative port, the positive probe on the positive port. So we already see uh, an indication that it receives voltage from the solar panel. And indeed, we see an output of 4.16 volts. So it actually regulates the voltage to the max charging voltage of lithium ion cells, so maximum 4.2 volts. So that's correct. Let's measure now the maximum current that it draws. So for that, I will have to change the connection to the amp measurement. So at full illumination, we are under 200 milliamps. So that's actually not so good because we could get up to 600, even a little bit more, 600 milliamps by uh, directly outputting from the solar panel. So that board actually limits the charging current. So I'm not sure that's gonna be a good idea because it's gonna be too low to be able to recharge a lithium cell. So I will find another way. I thought I could use that IC circuit to limit the input voltage to the solar nodes, but instead I think I will directly connect the solar panel to the rack wireless board. The specifications limit indeed the input to 5.5 volts but uh, I will still try to, to connect the solar panel. The voltage will drop anyway with the load so it might be just fine. Uh, let's try that. Okay so let's connect the solar panel to the board. Let's see what happens. Okay nice. So we see that we have a 5.3, 5.2 volts input connecting the solar panel directly to the board, to the rack wireless board. So that's actually very nice because it does not exceed the 5.5 uh, voltage limit as I uh, thought it would. But of course, 6 volts was the voltage uh, in short circuit connection directly to the solar panel. Obviously, when there is a load, the voltage will drop a bit, which is just perfect. So that's a uh, nice voltage. So let's see what's the charging current then. And for that, we will have to swap the probes. So I will first turn, turn that off. Yeah, that works uh, better than I thought. So I guess what we will do, we will set up then the node outside with a solar panel installed. We will uh, take notes regularly every 24 hours of the voltage of the battery pack. And we will check if the battery pack increases its voltage thanks to the charging or not. Okay, so we will prepare the node. I will pass the USB cable first through the little rubber gasket here of the box. 
and I will connect it inside to the solar charging port. So we will check the evolution of the voltage of the battery pack between the measurement we are going to take right now. Here I'm going to show it on screen with the Meshtastic app. And then once a day or so, or regularly, we will measure the voltage to follow the evolution. Obviously the voltage should at least not drop and better uh, increase up to 4.2 volts or 4.15 volts if the solar panel is effectively charging the solar node. And so we will install now physically the node outside for this purpose. So we will fix the solar node on this garden shed to do the experiment. And the solar panel is going to be fixed with the support here that we will screw onto the wood of the shed. And we are ready to rock. The solar node is installed on the shed now. We take note that we have a voltage of 3 volts 70 on the 13th of April. We'll measure regularly the voltage and see how it evolves. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.